Howdy folks, I think some of you are here because you like rum talk and you like rum. Uh, I got a pretty good rum talk here for you today. I got four offerings from the Transcontinental Rum Line. I'm gonna tell you all about them. Let's go. All right, so I got these all about, I don't know, last year, late last year, or maybe around Thanksgiving. Um, the first one I got was this was the Jamaican one, the the Worthy Park, and uh, I thought I'll I'll just I'll give this one a shot and see what we think. And it was so good, I decided I need to find what else we can find. We get good stuff here in Oregon, but um, sometimes some of the more rare like rare bottles we just don't get any. But there's a pretty good selection of these transcontinental rums, so um, let's give them a shot. So before we get to the actual rums, let me just tell you about the transcontinental rum line. It's a French label run by La Maison and Vellier. They have a few other uh, rum things as well, and they do a lot of whiskey importing as well, I believe. So what they're doing is buying aged barrels of rum from various countries around the world, shipping it back to France for further aging, uh, and then they bottle it up and sell it to you and me. Let me just tell you about the lineup overall first, uh, and then we'll get more deeply into each bottle. Now I'm gonna go from sort of the lightest to the darkest uh, and from the lowest proof to the highest proof because I think that'll be easier for me. Okay, so the first one we got is Panama 2011. By the way, these years are referring to the year it was distilled. It is a nine-year-old rum. It was aged in Panama for seven years and then an additional two years in France. I don't know which distillery this one comes from. And this is our only column distilled rum that I've got today, um, but I'm pretty excited about it. I don't know a lot about Panamanian rum, but let me tell you, this stuff is pretty good. Second up is going to be Australia 2014. It is a five year. It is aged, uh, it's actually a blend. It is three years in Australia and then two years in Europe, uh, but that's blended with another rum that was aged for five years in Australia. And that's our only one that's sort of blended of two different agings. Next up will be Jamaica Worthy Park 2013. This is also a five-year-old rum, three years in Jamaica, two years in Europe. I've tasted this before on the channel. There's a video if you want to watch it where I'm comparing a sort of older Worthy Park to this younger Worthy Park, the 12-year versus this five-year. It's, it's worth a watch, I think. And lastly, we have this Hamden from 2012. It's actually a single barrel pick from a local liquor store, so it's kind of a special one. It's nine years old, 3.2 years in Jamaica, 6.1 years in Europe. All right, let's just get into this. We're gonna start with the Panama 2011. It is 43.4% alcohol. This is the lowest alcohol uh, one that I've got, so we're gonna start with that. Now, I don't know a lot about distilleries in Panama. I know that there are a few, uh, a couple of larger ones, and it's probably from one of the larger distilleries, but it doesn't say on the bottle, and looking online, I couldn't, I couldn't find any information about which distillery it came from. I'm not sure that would make any difference to me anyway, since I don't know that much about Panama distilleries. Um, but if you, if you out there know uh, some good rums to get that are from Panama, I'd love to hear your recommendations because there's a couple here available in Oregon. I'm just not sure if they're worth buying or not. Now, as I said before, this is our only column still rums. A lot of times when people first get into rums, uh, they, they gravitate towards the Jamaican stuff because it's, it's, a, lot, it's a lot bolder, it's like a lot, a lot more flavorful. Uh, and sometimes that's what people like when they're first starting out. But if you get a little bit deeper, uh, there's some really delicious column still rums that are a little bit more subtle than some of these big, bold Jamaican ones. And this is one of them. You get some sort of light molasses. Some of those sort of pastry notes, I think. Uh, and this is nine years at, um, nine years old. It's, it's a little bit woody. Let's give it a taste. It's very light. It's very clean. It's got, um, reminds me a little bit of some of those Barbados okay. rums that were a little lighter, a little cleaner. Um, it's got sort of a lingering sort of vanilla woody note to it. Um, it's delicious, actually. It's, um, like I was saying, it's not like a hit you over the head with like overwhelming flavors. It's, 
It's a little bit more subtle. Um, it's a really good sipper, and at 43%, you can actually can sip it without diluting it, and it's not blowing away, you know, my palate, which I like. It's got all those uh, molasses-y vanilla notes that I'm sort of, that you sort of like in a rum. It's not super sweet, it's kind of dry, but it, and it lacks all of the sort of funkiness from a Jamaican, um, which is what I'm mostly used to, but this is delicious. Okay, so let's move on to our Australia 2014. Uh, this one is 48% alcohol, a little bit higher. It's a five-year-old rum, aged three years in Australia, and then two years in ex-cognac cask in France. That whole thing was blended with another barrel that was uh, aged for five years in Australia. So a bit, of a, a bit of a blend here. Now the bottle doesn't say what distillery it comes from, but a little research online says that it was made at the Beanlee Distillery in Queensland, Australia. Now I don't know very much about that at all, but I know a guy who is in Australia who can tell me about the Beanlee Distillery. His name is Andrew. He goes by Angry Cocktails uh, on YouTube. He's a really good a cocktail YouTuber. He's got a lot of great stuff. He does a lot of good experiments. He does a lot of barrel aging these days. Um, he really likes a milk wash. You should really go over there and subscribe. I'll leave a link down below. But I convinced him to um, just inform us about the Bean Leader. G'day, Uncle Pete. I thought I'd drop in and talk about the Beanley Rum Distillery, given that I'm Australian. Now, the Beanley Rum Distillery is not Australia's best known distillery these days, but it is Australia's oldest distillery, going back to 1884, the early days of Australia's sugarcane industry. Basically, all the rums around the world come out where there's a sugarcane industry. Australia is no different. And a couple of English farmers had set up their sugar plantation and they were refining sugar. And then on a nearby river, there was a boat called the SS Walrus. And the captain of that boat, known colloquially as the Bosun, had a copper pot still on board, if you can believe it. And he was getting excess molasses from the sugar business and turning it into illicit rum. And then apparently one day it ran aground the captain was nowhere to be found, but the still was there, and then we had the legal Beanley Distillery. As you would expect, over nearly two centuries, the business has changed hand multiple times. These days, they are running from what they call the Big Red Shed, still using the old copper pot, which they call the old copper, and it's the only one of its type in Australia. So they focus on what they call artisan rum making. There's only four people who work there, including the distiller. And so it's a very handcrafted operation, giving some very unique and good quality rums, including if you're ever lucky enough to get it, a limited run they do occasionally of overproof rums. And I mean over 150 proof rums called the Inner Circle. They're not the best known, but they do do very high quality rums and they're getting further around the world, it seems. So yeah, keep an eye out for Australia's Beanley Rum. All right, Andrew, uh, thanks for coming. I really appreciate that. Now let me get into this uh, Australia 2014. It is pretty clean on the nose. Uh, not a ton of like funky aromas. Sort of like an, like an apple or like a dried fruit kind of smell. Okay, that's delicious. Mmm. It's um. Mm. Oh yeah, it's got like a, a nice sweet, a nice sweet caramely aftertaste. Uh, it, it's it starts out kind of dry, and um, sort of dried fruits, and then at the end it sort of the the sweetness kind of comes through at the end. Now this is a hundred percent pot steel rum. Pot still rums are a little heavier, uh, a little bit more flavorful, but it doesn't have to be a funky rum. So they do things to uh, add esters to the to the mash when they make these funkier rums, and it's up to the distiller what they're going to make. And these guys have made a sort of cleaner pot still rum. I mean, it's hard to say that I can detect the cognac barrel, but that extra sweetness I think has is, is something to do with the cognac barrel. Mm, that's really nice. Now, this is five years old. It's not super woody. I feel like a five-year-old rum is, is kind of almost like a sweet spot for me. Um, the, the, sometimes the really much older ones are a little bit, you know, a little bit too much. 
Also, 48% alcohol, that's, that's definitely still sippable. I like this a lot. Okay, moving on, we got this Jamaica Worthy Park 2013. Now, this is the first one of these I bought. I've almost finished this bottle. I went back to try and get another bottle because I thought, this is really good. I'm going to need some more of this. Uh, and they didn't have it at the liquor store where I got it in the first place, but they did have the Australian one, so I bought it. Uh, and that just now that's led me to get two more, but I love a Worthy Park, okay, first of all, especially one that's not too old. The 12 year old one that I have, it's meh, it's, it's a little bit too much, you know? But let's just see how this uh, Worthy Park five year is. You immediately get more of those tropical fruits, more of that banana, that sort of mango, um, a little bit of like a, like a pastry. So it's almost like, um, uh, like like a I don't know like a mango Danish or something like that. Hmm, that's delicious. Bananas. Let's give this a taste. This is this is really good. This is this mm. might be my favorite one. Banana oh, yeah. bread. Lots of lots of fruits. Um, s subtle subtle sweetness. Um, a little bit of oakiness. Really nice, really like, I put a little bit of water in this because at 56% that can be a little bit much. This one rules. If you can find this one, definitely buy it. I think they come out with these every year. I'm not 100% sure how this whole transcontinental release uh, system works, but if you can find a transcontinental worthy park, I highly recommend it. Okay, last but not least, I've got my transcontinental single cask. Uh, chosen by a local liquor store, Farmington Liquor, only available in Oregon. It's from Hamden Distillery, one of my other favorites. It's at 57.6%, which is a little bit high. I've been sort of steering away from the super high proof rums because I just, I can't take it. I've already added a little bit of water to this, so let's see how it goes. Oh, and bef but before I get into that, this bottle has got a lot more information on it than the others. I don't know if that's a product of being a single cask or what, but it does say the ester level, which is 122, uh, which is not super duper high. Uh, and it says it's got a sugar level of 1.2 grams per liter. And it claims there's no color or sugar added, which is not a big surprise. And again, aged in the tropical conditions in Jamaica for three years and then an extra six years in Europe. So this has been aged for quite a while in Europe. Now, of course, as you may or may not know, when you age something in a barrel in a very hot place, it tends to get more effect from the wood. So it can age more slowly in Europe, basically. Hmm. So let's give this a, let's give this a whiff. Yeah. I mean, it smells like Hamden. It's got that sort of characteristic, uh, characteristic sort of breadiness, sort of um, like biscuit shortbread kind of uh, aroma to it. It is, it's not, doesn't smell as fruity as the Worthy Park one did, but it's a, it's a pretty low ester level one, so that's not super surprising. It's, uh, it's a little hot. Mm. Use a little bit more water, maybe. Mm. The beginning is a little bit strong as it mellows out in my mouth. You get a little, just a little hints of that sort of um, fruitiness, that sort of those tropical bananas. Um, it's got sort of a, a, an acidity to it, if that makes sense. It's, it's a little bit sharp, whereas some of these other ones are a little bit more rounded. This is, it's kind of like a sharp, bright biscuit. Anyway. It's delicious. All right, conclusions, conclusions. I think my overall favorite is probably the Worthy Park, although the Australia 2014 was a kind of a surprise hit. I hadn't, didn't know what to expect from that one, and it's really pretty delicious. And the Panama uh, is a lot more subtle, and it's pretty drinkable, and I have a feeling that one's gonna go pretty fast. The, the Hamden one, a little hard to take at such a high proof, but it's got that nice Hamden biscuitiness and sort of a, nice uh, woody you know, extension of the flavor. It's also very good, although pretty difficult to find. All right, let me know down in the comments if you've tried any of these and what you think. Uh, if you have any recommendations for Panamanian rum, let me know. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. 10 bar, two door train for San Francisco airport in seven minutes.